Just show up and tell him that he's good. And tell him that he's a blessing to us. Because God blesses us when we don't even know where the blessings are coming from. He still shows up anyway, anyhow. He says everything's going to work together for our good. So he is good because everything that he created is good. You, but I'm excited well, for now. And if you don't mind, let us open up our service in prayer because he gathered us here today for a reason, for a purpose. There's a word that has been prepared for us today. Yes. And I don't know about you, but I'm hungry. Yes. I'm ready to eat. When we can go that first after righteousness, and we should be mad. Yes. So I'm thirsty, y'all. It's not that the world came up with thirsty, but I'm thirsty because it was in the Bible. Come on. We thirst for you. Thirst. Well, ah. but he's the bread of life, so he's gonna feed us today. Amen. Anybody in here hungry? Yes. But he says we can dine with him, Amen. so we have a seat at the table. We can dine with him in Jesus' name. Amen. Eternal and heavenly Father, God, we give you the glory, yes. all the honor. Lord, we couldn't thank you enough, God, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, God, for your everlasting love and your eternal greatness. Yeah. We thank you, God, that you not only created, but you sustained and maintained the heavens and the earth, everything that's in between, Lord. Yeah. Lord, you know us by name. You called us here today. This was your home in here. This was your gathering. You brought us here today for such a time as this, Lord. So, God, we just want to take the opportunity to just say, Lord, come on and have your way in this place. Lord, we don't want to miss you. We want you right here with us. Move in this place like you've never moved before. We've experienced you last Sunday, but let us see you today. Amen. Let us know you are here today, Amen. God. Let your rushing wind come into this house, God, and move upon heart, upon heart, upon heart, Lord. Even on the empty chairs, Lord. Yes. Promise God to the empty chairs, Lord. Come on, God. That they will come in, God. That they will hear you, that they will see you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Jesus looked out and he had compassion on the people. So, Lord, let us today know, God, that you are not only in control, God, but that you are working a work in this place today. We invite you in, God, and say, Lord, we thank you for the word. We thank you for the pastors that are here. We thank you for their faithfulness. We thank you for their consistency. But we thank you that you set them as a pattern on how to do this work. God. Thank you, God. We thank you for their preaching and their teaching. We just thank you, Lord, because, God, you said you'll supply all of our needs. That's just not the casual, but you supply everything that you need to stand in need of, God. While we were praying and asking, you've already answered, Lord. So today, God, Lord, we thank you, God, that we know according to your word that you are our portion. Yes, God. We accept you as our portion today, Lord. For those that are here, God, we ask that they don't need the same transform. Renew us in the word today, God. Because we know that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And it leads us and it guides us. So God, we want to take a moment to just thank you for the word. But Lord, we want to make sure that we're right first. So if there's anything in us that would hinder, that would distract, that would obstruct, anything in us, any little thing, anything that we even know about that would separate us from hearing your voice today, we ask that you would remove it right now in the name of Jesus. We repent for every sin that we have done and said and knowing it unknowingly, God. Because God, we want to come before you with clean hands and a pure heart. That we may boldly come before your throne of grace, Lord, in our time of need and our time of trouble, but our time of great gratitude. So, God, we're thankful. Bless those that could not be here today, Lord. Let our prayers and our supplication lift them up, God, in the name of Jesus, to you, Lord. That you will heal hearts, you will heal minds, you will heal bodies. For those that are sick and infirm in their bodies, Lord, we ask that you send divine healing right now in the name of yes, Jesus. Yes, God, in the name of that Jesus. That you would heal them, God, that they would be set free from any infirmity and sickness in Jesus' name. So, Lord, we please yes, the Lord Jesus over them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. So, Lord, those that have been hit by tragedy and untimely death, God, Lord, we ask that you would give comfort to the families this morning. We lift them up in prayer. Send your peace, send your strength, God, that they would feel you and know that you are there, that you are God that never leaves nor the say that you understand. So heal their hearts, Lord. Their sorrowful hearts. Let there be joy and gladness. Yes, God. 
You said weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Amen. You even tell them that blessed those that are mourned, for they shall be comforted, Lord. Yes, God. So we thank you that there's a comforter that will come down. So send your comforter, Lord, in Jesus' name. Let this be a world that will come and repent before you, God. That when they return from their wicked ways, seek your face, God. It was then you would hear the prayers, Lord. Heal you would heal the land. My Lord. God. So God, we stand in need of a healing in this land, in this universe, in this community, God, and our nations, Lord, everywhere, God. We want you there where they've been pushed out, Lord. Let your marvelous light come in, Lord, that it will shine upon the darkness. So God, we thank you right now. Thank you, Lord. For everything. It is in your will, according to your word, to give you thanks. So we want to thank you right now in Jesus' name for what you will do in here today, God. We thank you, God, that we came in one way, but we'll leave, God. My Trans God. Renewed in our minds. Let your Yes, Lord, God. His presence, he always answers. So I want to take this opportunity as we were talking about praising him, that the praise and worship team will come up at this time and we prepare our hearts and minds for praise and worship. Amen. Amen.
every phrase. Not just the bones. Not just when you feel like it. But every phrase goes to our Lord. Amen? Right now we want to take the opportunity to just welcome our first time visitors in the house. If we have any first time visitors in the house today, please stand. We just want to acknowledge you. Christ Jesus. Amen? Win. Because you can win. Amen? So you can win. How many of y'all know that you're already winners? Yes. Yes. Anytime that you can just stand up and just say, Lord, I thank you for being here another day, you know you've already won when you yes. come to the other side, whatever it is that you're on. Amen? Amen. So we are winners. We are conquerors. Conquerors. And we can do all things through Christ Jesus. Christ. Yes. That's what the word tells us. So right now, we also want to take this time to um, if you want to do your tithes of offering, and we have a new way of doing it right now, you know that God loves a cheerful giver. Yes. Give seed to the sower. Yes. And there are several ways that we can do our tithes and offering now, and one of them is text to give. Yes. And there's a number that you call when you're doing the text. The number is 302-212-0070, and it's just then give. You can also do it by perfectworldministries.org. If you want to do it by credit card or debit card online, you can do that as well. And for some of us that like to mail it in or still use the mail, the postal service, you can also do Perfect World Ministries at P.O. Box 823, Bear, Delaware, 197001. And for here in the church, if you need an envelope, we have one of our watchmen. We'll bring an envelope. Just raise your hand, stick your hand up, and he will get that to you. And as we are passing out the envelopes, we will right after have Sister Melina come up. We do have a birthday for Nicole Wilcher. We want to take the opportunity to just happy birthday. say happy birthday. To just be here, like I said, another day, but just to know that God is, God is here. Do you feel his presence in the house? Yes, He's yes here. God. He's here. And we want to take this opportunity to just bless God in everything that we do. Because everything that we do is in honor of him. And as we continue, as we are doing our time and offering, we want to also prepare our hearts and minds for communion. Which is an act of worship. It's a time to remember. It's not a solemn occasion, but the Bible says on several occasions through our scriptures that Jesus says, remember me. There's a time of remembering. There's also a time where in 1 Corinthians, Paul says, let a man examine himself. Yes. And we want to take the time to just examine ourselves, to inspect our own selves. And at that time, it's a time where if there's anything that we stand in need of forgiveness, <coughs> or we need to forgive others. We want to make it right before we partake of the Lord's Supper. As we're preparing our hearts and minds, there's a time where Jesus was meeting with his disciples. There was the upper room that was prepared. And as they were partaking of the Lord's Supper, Nothing that they had not done before, time after time. On this particular night, Jesus took two symbolic elements off the table, which some would have looked at as just being common, just bread and juice or wine. 
But this had a symbolism to it this particular time. Because he was illustrating, he was also teaching. So what he did was he took the thread. He broke the thread. He blessed the blood. Then he gave the blood. And he told his disciples, this is my body, which is broken for you. Then he had taken you again. And in that same manner, right after him, he had taken a cup. Where is the cup? He said, this is my blood, which is shed for me. This symbolizes a new covenant, a new agreement, a new binding agreement. My blood, this is for you. You may take and you may drink. The Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. So in that cup was a sacrifice. But in everything that he did, from breaking the bread to drinking of the cup, he said, do this in remembrance of me. Yes. But it brings me back, as we were in our service today, about healing. Isaiah 53, I believe the Bible says, he was wounded by our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon his shoulders. And by his stripes, we are healed. Yes. We are set free and we are delivered yes. through his body and through his blood. May the Lord have a blessing to our community. In Jesus' name. some correspondence for everybody, not just for perfect will, but for everybody to get back into the house of the Lord. Yes, yes. Get back to your first love. And I put in, I put out, uh, Brother Maurice, I put out a, a picture of uh, these street lights. And on um, a dark street, we had street lights and the light shining on the streets. And most of us in our generation know that when those street lights came on, if you was at home, mama was going to whoop you, right? You had to beat those street lights on. So I put in the caption, I said, listen, I said, most of our generation understand that. I said, but the street lights are on and you can come back into the house of God and God won't whoop you and he won't beat you. All he wants to do is love on you. Yeah. So come on back to your first love. Yeah. So I, I told everybody to get back into the house of God. Let, let me start by saying this because I really feel healing in this place. So as we were singing and praise and worship was going along, as we were singing and praise and worship was going along, um, I just felt a sense of healing. Um, Brother Brian, I'm telling you right now, the thing that's been kicking you, the thing that's been bothering you, it's already done, bro. It's done. It's, it's gone. It's here. It's here. All that concern you have about, well, is this going to work or how am I going to do this? Already done. Brother Maurice, they, they, they say God is omnipresent. God is everywhere. So when you stepped in the door this morning, God met you. The thing that's been perplexing you, the thing that's been confusing you, when you heard those words, when you heard me stand, you knew it was done. So it's already done. So God is doing some things. Uh, with that healing, I want to say before I pray and start to, to minister today, because I got a, 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 a brief word, but it's, it's, it, it's about healing. Um, and, and, and let me say this before I start. At Perfect World Ministries, this is a year of elevation. 
In the men's fellowship last night, we talked about all sorts of elevation. And uh, many of us have experienced elevation throughout this year and multiple types of elevation. Uh, yesterday was no different. Yesterday was 12, 4, 22. 12 is the government. 4 is to rule and to reign. And 22, when you break down uh, twos and twos, when you break down uh, all that, what you say? Well, yesterday was the third, 12, three. So we can break that down into conformity, right? And then when you break down two and two, two means to divide, to discern, to judge. And I'm gonna tell y'all what, elder male. Let's, 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 let's do elder male. Elder male. Yeah, 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 I know where I always do, I know where I always do, I know where I always do, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Elder Nell stood flat for the yesterday in front of a Presbyterian board, huh. Come on. with questions firing at her, maybe about an hour and a half, almost two, it was about two hours, hmm. that she was under the gun, but let me tell you something. This woman of God stood flat-footed, answered every question with excellence. Come on. And, and here's the thing, here's the thing that y'all don't understand. Elder Mel has been a minister at Perfect Will Ministries for 15 years. She's already been laboring in the vineyard. She's already done everything she was supposed to do, but it was the examination. We talk about let a man examine himself. We talk about a, 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 a man of God, a woman of God, understanding and rightly dividing the truth. You have to be tested if you take that position. You don't put novices in that position. And she did excellent 15 years as a minister, Another four more years as a deacon. That's so 19 years of ministry. But y'all want to understand when I'm talking about healing. You want to know why I'm going to talk about healing? Because part of our testimony, and most of y'all know, some of y'all don't, was that she was hurt in church when she was 16. And for 17 years, she never stepped foot back into a church. But now the very church that hurt her, years later, she's an elder in God's church. Come on, y'all. Y'all can't tell me that God's will. Y'all can't tell me that God is not real. Y'all can't tell me that anything that you're going through, he can't heal you. But you have a duty. You got to come after God. And we're going to talk about that today. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that on this last month of 2022, God, you have blessed us. This last month of December, which is government, everything comes into order in your order, God. So we ask right now, Lord God, as you have already set the table, you have already set the tone with the worship, God, we ask right now that your word would go through with power. We, I ask right now, God, that every distraction, everything that anybody was thinking about, the Eagles game coming on, even though we're going to be 11 and 1, the Eagles game coming on in just a little bit, God, just remove that right now and let us focus and let us concentrate on you. Because you get total victory and you get total glory. Make this word today a, a, a familiar word and some familiar passages, but illuminate some new things that we've never seen before. And allow us to carry on. And just like the men's meeting last night, God, we ask that you allow each and every one of us to get off the sidelines and get into the game. Get into the game, Lord God, and, and help somebody else along the way. We thank you for healing. We thank you for, for Elder Mel. We thank you for what she did yesterday, for what she demonstrated to the Presbyterian board that she is indeed worthy Amen. of the honor. So, as I begin to minister this, this morning, we take Minister Mel, for example, she epitomizes what this word says. Make it plain, God. Holy Spirit, as always, we invoke your presence. Come and dwell among us. Have your way in this place. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 That's the way we do it here. I, I like it for them to talk back to uh, Brother Maurice. I, if, if, can I get comfortable, y'all? Yeah. We're going we to have some fun in there. All right. So, um, so in Bible study, I got to ask. So in Bible study, I'm telling y'all, y'all been missing Bible study, y'all been missing a lot. We've been going over some things and we got into a really candid discussion 
um, in a poignant discussion this past Wednesday. And one of the questions was, as Christians, and we love God, and we, and we understand his word, and so, so many times we come to church, we can get so, so formatted into all the theological things and speak the right language and all that, but on Bible study on Wednesday, the question came up, have you ever been fighting men? Has anything ever got you fighting men? And we started talking about some cases that we had seen on television. If you watch those court TV cases and those families coming to court and the father or the, 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 the family member goes into court and the witness has no remorse and they lose it, that'll make you fight mad whether you, whether you are saved or not. And, and I brought up in Bible study, if you ever saw the Jeffrey Dahmer thing that was on television or even the nose clips when the one lady got up, and she just lost it because he would not look at her. You know, he wouldn't give her any respect and she just lost it. Yeah, I'm a Christian. Yeah, I love God, but has anything ever made you fight a man? And a lot of y'all get in church and say, no, I have the Lord. No, God, it's, it's, you're lying. Because I just saw you last week on the highway because somebody cut you off. And I ain't saying what I saw you say. But here's the thing. No matter how saved you are, some certain circumstances will make you fighting mad. And sometimes it gets to the point where you will almost want to kill someone. And then they're like, oh, Pastor, did you yeah, I said it. I said it. Because I've been there before. I mean, physically, I've been there before. And, 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 and I want to make you understand that there's a sense of healing that needs to take place. There, even though you know it here, there is a discipline that has to happen when it occurs. And if you don't have that discipline, you can hear, did we talk about it last night? If you didn't have that discipline, you could, you said out in your own words, you could have been somewhere else this morning and not here. Yeah. But there was a discipline and there was an accountability of saints that, 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 that allowed you to be in a different place. So if we uh, keep it a being, Young people, if we keeping it a hundred uh, for my older saints, if we if if we are uh, if we are being truthful, right? We've all been at this point and got to this point in our lives. In the natural, this is what we say and have said over time. In the natural, we just want to TCB. Somebody tell me what that is. We want to take care of business. Not business, business. We want to take care of business. And watch this. However, when you get to those points, God wants you to TCB as well. But God wants you to TCB in his own right. And God's TCB is simply this. God wants you to throttle down. Slow down everything. Think about the totality of circumstances. Think about what you're about to do. In law enforcement, they would always tell us, just stop and think about whenever you're in a, an adverse situation, and it's always going to be like this, but stop. And really what happens is just like a movie. Everything slows down in your mind. If you've ever been shot at, if you've ever been in a shootout, everything literally just slows. It's like a movie. It really just slows down. So God says, before you lose it, I want you to throttle down. I want you to think about the totality of circumstances. If you do this, then this will happen. So T, throttle down. And then he says, I want you, what the Bible has always told us, I want you to count the cost. I want you to count the cost because after you act out of anger, then what's going to happen? Right? And it don't even have to be not even talking about killing with somebody. I'm talking about that argument that you have with your spouse. I'm talking about the, 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 those words that you say, those visceral words that just come out. And y'all know the saying, once the toothpaste is out the tube, you can't put it back. Don't tell me you didn't mean it because it came out. It was in your heart or else it wouldn't have came out. See, the discipline says, I love my wife. I really want to retaliate and I really want to say something, but that's what I'm going to like this one. I'm going to just be quiet. And I'm not going to say a word. 
Because if I meet the level of resistance, hostage negotiation, if I meet her level of resistance with my level of resistance, then it's a lose-lose situation. But if I bite my words and don't say a word, then guess what? At some point on the continuum, she's going to come down to a level where she levels out. So again, count the costs. And the last letter in TCP is B is, y'all know this young people, y'all can help me with this one. It's called buffer. All the people say, what do you mean buffer? What do you buffer? Buffer is a is a is a is a, a term that the kids know on, on, on the internet. Buffering is a process that makes watching videos possible. But watch this. Buffering makes streaming smoother because when you put a video up online, a video can start playing before the entire video is loaded, so it allows you to slow down. Buffering doesn't let you get above. Or, oh, I just want to go to you. You can't get to the end of the movie if it's buffering. You got to wait out the process. Right? No, I just want to get to the end because they don't know. You're going to have to watch the whole thing. You ever hear we got this new, we got this thing on Comcast and Direct TV. You got that uh, on demand thing? Yeah. You know how if you take a program, ready to take a program, they not always see the commercials. Do you get to the commercial? Well, if you do on demand, it's like buffering. You can't go. You can. You cannot fast forward in this mode. You can. You can rewind. So God says, "Look, I don't want you to get ahead of what I'm doing because just like Minister Frank said last night, as I'm teaching today, <clears throat> and y'all understand, y'all got that whole seven minutes of attention, and y'all gonna wander somewhere. I understand that." <laughs> But Minister Frank said last night, don't, 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 don't miss it. So just like this, as you want to advance past the commercials, God said, I ain't letting you because there's something in one of these commercials that you need to hear. So TCB, I need you, God says, I need you to throttle down. I need you to count the costs. And I need you, Michi, to start buffering. So Let's, let's, let's go Bible. We talked about what we talked about. <clears throat> now let's go Bible. This fighting man scene. Is there a biblical example? Do we see this anywhere in the Bible? Is there anyone that you've read about, that you've studied about, in the Bible that became fighting man? And God and wanted to TCB. They wanted to take care of business. And everybody went, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and it's a whole bunch of people, right? And so as we think about these people, I'll give you one example that came to mind. An in, in, in example that many of us know. It's the story of King David and Saul. So, and I ain't talking about I ain't talking about somebody, Brother Marley said something to you and you mad. And no, I can kill him because he said my mother was ugly. Man, I ain't talking about this. I'm talking about David knows this man is out to kill him. So much so, man, the guy, that David is sitting down and all of a sudden takes Saul, takes a spear, and throws it, I mean, point blank, period, throws it at him and says, Ooh, I'm gonna kill somebody. Talk, <laughs> you coming after me? Ooh! That will make somebody fight mad. So, so, so David sees this, and y'all mad because somebody says something about y'all. Somebody says something to you about your relative, or somebody says something about how you dress, or somebody, and y'all ready to fight. But I'm showing you in 1 Samuel chapter 24, verse 4, there's an instance after all that has happened, the Bible says that David and his men are hiding in the cave. Yes. Uh, yeah. And as he's hiding in the cave, uh, 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 man of God, as he's hiding in the cave, Saul takes 3,000 men who are looking for him. And the Bible says that David and his fighting men are hiding deep in the cave so Saul can't see him. 
Him, he and his 3,000 men entered the cave. Don't even see David. But it's dark. David, strategically, after all of this, and I want to kill somebody, what he did, does is he walks up to Saul and he cuts off a corner of his robe. Huh? And as he cuts off a corner of his robe, he walks back and disappears. Saul does not find him. I'm telling you, I've read that story a million times, and when I first read the story, I got mad. What you mean he cut off a corner of his robe? I'd have bust him upside his head. No, I'm, I'm real. I'd have bust you straight upside your head after you tried to kill me. Right? But what David does, he goes back and he retreats. And the Bible says that his conscience got so bad on him that he had to go up and he had to confront Saul. And when he went out to confront Saul, David said, listen, uh, listen, man, look, I'm going to show you right here. I cut off a corner of your road, dog. I was this close. I could have killed you. How many of you ever read that before? All right? Saul had made so many attempts on David's life. But as I read this, when I was younger. I said, why did David cut off a corner of his room? I get to the part why he didn't kill him. We're going to talk about that in just a few minutes. I know why he didn't kill him. I know now. But y'all hold up. Okay, if you can't kill him, why you ain't cut off his arm? If you can't kill him, jab him. Poke his eye out. If you can't kill him, puncture his leg so he can't walk again. Did you ever ask yourself the question? Why, why did he cut a corner of his room? What the heck is that all about? Remember what we say here at Perfect Will. Every chance you get to read the Bible, there's a learning piece. There's something to be learned in everything that God wrote. So watch this. The reason, and y'all already know this is just review for y'all. The reason why David couldn't kill Saul is in Psalms 105, verse 15. Psalms 105, verse 15. As well as 1 Chronicles 16, 22. And it says, God instructs David, he says, Touch not thou anointed, and do my prophet no harm. So I told you before, as I preached in weeks earlier, the anointed could not kill the anointed. David couldn't, he still was anointed of God. The battle is not yours, it belongs to me. I'll take care of Saul. You just stop it. Pastor takes me, how many times have we had to eat crow mm. as pastors? Mm. Oh, oh, I want to get him. I want to tell it. I want to tell everybody because the, the picture that they're presenting to the congregation ain't halfway true, ain't even a third true. I just want to blast them. And God says, shut your mouth. You don't say a word. You eat everything that's coming down your pipe. Talk bad about you. Say bad things about you. Go to other people. You know they go to other pastors and tell people about you. But guess what? A year later, God blows it all up. And we ain't have to say a word. I'm trying to teach y'all today. is sometimes you want to want to blow up the spot. <laughs> Yo. But sometimes you've got to hold your peace because if you're going to live as God instructed you to do, sometimes you got to trust them because they're going to make everything all right. It is not just words, y'all. We've lived it. And I ain't just talking about a pastor. I've lived it as, as a man. We talked about it last night, and I won't get into it, but we talked about it last night. There's some things, if you want to trust them, you won't have to trust them. One of them. And if you don't, then you don't. It ain't no halfway. Ain't no great to have trust in because then he'll blow up your spot. Amen? So let's get back to this. Let, let, let's learn. Who, who wants to learn today? Who wants to learn today? Let, let's learn about this whole road piece. And, and, and today I, I want to I wanna, uh, preach a sermon. Can you put that picture up for me, uh, Brother Randy? I want to preach a certain topic. Today it says, what are you reaching for? 
As we go into 2023, I want to ask y'all, what are y'all reaching for? I asked, I asked, I asked this to Arduino this morning then. What are you reaching for? And as, as, as we understand this, what are you reaching for? We got to look back and we got to understand that God wants to, to do uh, uh, some things. So, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. You can leave that down. You can leave that, you can leave that off. Can you enlarge that picture for me, Brother Raymond? And, and I'll, I'll get you the picture in just a minute. So, as, as, as we're looking at that, what are you reaching for? Just ask yourself as you go into this year, what, what are you reaching for? In 2023, what are you reaching for? What do you want? And, and Sister Edwina, you gave me some awesome answers today. But I want y'all to, 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 to think about that as you go forward. Watch this. So now we can turn the lights on. I want you to see this. So if you look at this picture, you thought turn off the uh, two lights on the bottom too, because that's not really clear. It's just for a few minutes. It's gonna get dark in here, but don't get scared. Just know who's around you, hold your purse. So. <laughs> so 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 every robe in the Jewish culture, on the end of every robe, there were tassels. And with these tassels, God instructed Moses in supplemental laws. He said, this is what I need you to do. I need you to tie tassels with blue ribbons entangled at the end of your garment. You can turn the lights back on. I just wanted y'all to get that picture. Uh, so, 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 so as we, as we look at that, watch this. In the Mosaic law, God gave his people specific instructions to do this. And, and, and when he took those, 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 those tassels and he inserted that blue ribbon, if you look at, turn with me to Nehemiah, uh, turn with me to Numbers chapter 15. And I'm going to show you where it is in the word. Numbers chapter 15. And I'm going to show you why this whole cutting off the corner of the garment is so very important. Are we there yet? Numbers chapter 15. Amen. So in Numbers chapter 15, if you can go with me down, these are supplemental uh, laws of God. God is giving Moses instructions to the people about what to do. Numbers chapter 15, verses 37 to 41. And I'll read. And the Lord spake to Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them, tell them, that they make them fringes on the borders, in the border of the garments throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders on a ribbon of blue. And it shall be unto you a fringe that ye may look upon and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. This was a reminder to keep the commandments of the Lord. And ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes which ye use to go whoring that ye may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. I am the Lord your God which has brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. So in the ancient Near East tradition where, where they were, here's the answer. The corner of a person's garment represented their identity. It was a symbol of who they were and what they stood for. So the same Hebrew word that symbolized the, cor the, gar the corner of a person's garment is a wing. How many times do you see in the Bible talk about God spreading his wing? How many times when, when, when Ruth went out to go meet Boaz, did she not lay up under his garment? Because she was taking on his identity. So why was this so important? Now I understand, God, thank you. After all these years of studying, now I understand why I was so mad. Why he only cut a corner of his rope. Now he made it abundantly clear. When David caught the corner of Saul's robe, 
In other words, he clipped part of his wing. He stole part of his identity. He chucked him before all of Israel. He said, look, I stole something. You ain't bad as you thought you was. Look at this. Look what I did. I fronted you in front of everybody. Now you look like the world says a sucker. Mm. And so when the, the imagine going out and a piece of your garment gone. <laughs> hey, 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 whoa, wait, hey. hey yo. So now everybody looking at you like, yo, the boy David is that man. Right? So you gotta look at, 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 at those things. Now let's go to Jesus. When we move up to Jesus, and we talk about his time, and we talk about the Pharisees, and we talk about the Essenes, and we talk about the scribes, and we look on 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 uh, in a, on television, or we look uh, online, and we see a lot of different things, then guess what? When we see their extravagant ornamental gear, they got all of these robes and cassocks and, 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 and all these things, and then they have their robe, and because they are part Jewish, they have these tassels on the end of their robes, and they're ornate, and they're extravagant. But Jesus was my big brother. He liked me, man, I ain't wearing all of that. Jesus' gear was simple, yes, amen. and it was plain. But he had the tassels because it was part of the tradition. So Jesus would not wear what they wore. His was more refined. His was more modest, as Minister Mel just said. But watch this. We're talking about, for those of you welcome who just came in, we're talking about the, cor the corner of a, 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 a Jewish person's garment. We talked about Saul. We talked about David. Why in the world would David cut the cord on Saul's robe? What did that mean? And understanding in Jewish history, that meant that it's part of your identity. It's part of who you were. It's part of what you stood for. Because, you know, me, y'all, y'all just coming in. I don't know y'all, but I'm telling you what. If you did threaten me and try to kill me, I wouldn't have cut no robe. I would have been cutting something else. But again, he could not touch God's anointing. So I just taught you up where we are. So here's the thing. When we look at Jesus, he, didn't, he wouldn't wear that. He didn't wear these extravagant showpieces, but he did have tassels like we saw in the picture on his simplistic garment. Why? Because the Jews were familiar with the history of what I just told you in Numbers chapter 15. Numbers chapter 15, verse 37 through 41, if you just came in. And so watch this. So when we examine all that Jesus, listen to me, when we examine all that Jesus touched, and all of the people who touched him, there's a telling truth. There's a thread. There's something in common for us that we need to understand. In the Bible, we read of many miracles. Right? We read of many miracles of Jesus. And some of the miracles that we read about him, we read about how Jesus touched people and they were healed. Did I not say that was healing in here today? I'm going to talk about real quickly about how, how, how Jesus touched some people and they were healed. Y'all remember the leper in Galilee? Y'all see, see y'all don't understand. I ain't going to go into that story because I'll get sidetracked. We're talking about Peter's mother-in-law in Capernaum. We're talking about the 12-year-old girl in Capernaum. Y'all remember the story? Y'all remember Jerry comes up to Jesus in the crowd and he's pleading with Jesus, would you please, my daughter is dying, would you please come see about her? Jesus leaves, goes to the house of Jerry, and a little girl is dying, and Jesus touches her, and Jesus says, Talitha kum. In other words, what that's translated in the Hebrew and the Aramaic, it's translated as arise, dance, arise, and a girl got up. So we talk about that. We talk about the crowd of people in Cape Renown. There were crowds of people that Jesus just started touching, just started touching, and they were healed. 
The deaf man who, who can barely talk in the Catholic. Jesus touches them and he goes from mute to talking. A blind man in Jerusalem, a blind man in Bethesda, a woman in the synagogue who could not stand up straight and finally, come on, dog. How about Malchus? Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane. And they come to get him. And they come to strike him. And all of a sudden, the Roman soldiers, they go to apprehend him. And Malchus, one of the Roman soldiers, grabbed Jesus and my man Peter. That's my dude. That's who I think of Herbie, my people. That's who I'm rolling with. As soon as they grab Jesus, Malchus take, take my plate up. Take his plate. Oh, cut his ear off. <laughs> and all of a sudden, Jesus said, no, 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 put that blade away. Picks up Malchus' ear. Put it back on, dude. And touch his ear in his ear. Malchus said, oh my gosh. You are the greatest. But, but how many people did Jesus touch? And they were healed. What is my sermon topic today? What are you reaching for? These are the people that Jesus touched. But there was a stark difference in the individuals that reached out to touch Jesus. The most prominent is the one that we read about in Matthew chapter 9, verse 20. And I ain't even going to go because most of y'all know the woman with the issue of blood. So you got this lady for 12 years. <clears throat> blood is just cushioning. And it, can, and it won't stop. She's going from doctor to doctor to doctor, from physician to physician to physician, from prophet to prophet to prophet, from person to person to person, and nobody can stop the blood. What are you reaching for? But she said, out of her own mouth, in a crowd of people, as Jesus is walking by, she said, if I can only touch the hem of his garment. Y'all don't want to, y'all, y'all. Hmm. Why she ain't want to, why she ain't want to grab his arm? Why she ain't want to hug him? Why was she seeking to grab the hem of his garment? That's why it took so long to show you all those tassels. Watch this. So as she reaches out for the hem of the garment, and she's going down, if I could only touch the hem of his garment, Matthew chapter 9, verse 20. Y'all see that whole hem thing coming back again that I just took, talked to y'all about? Please understand when people reached for the hem of Jesus' garment, they could have grabbed any other place. What they were doing was they understood Jewish history. And so when they touched to, to, to when they reached out to touch the hem of his garment, they were identifying with him. They didn't want to hug him. And, and you all remember, and we've preached this before, as deep, it wasn't nothing magical about those tassels. It wasn't nothing mystical about those tassels. See, y'all, y'all, this generation, y'all got to program. Did you feel the energy today? Mm. I want to talk about the energy. Mm. Did you feel the aura? Mm. Aura. Mm. It's called the anointing. Yes. It's called the oil. Come on. Say what it is. Yes. That all this energy crap. Yes. It is the anointing of God. The Bible says, and we've taught that as Jesus walked, he, she didn't grab him. She simply grabbed and touched the hem of his garment. And, 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 and when you study it out, we've taught here before that Jesus felt virtue leave him. Yes, mm. yes, yes, he did. Because in those castles was the anointing, not energy. <laughs> <laughs> and so as, 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 as she touched the hem of a garment, the woman with the issue of blood became healed because Jesus said what? 
he looked at her in Matthew chapter 9, verse 22, and he said, Woman, your faith has made you whole. Did y'all hear what I said? Yeah, yeah some, somebody missed that. Somebody missed that. Somebody missed that. He said, Your faith has made you whole. A, 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 a minister Frank, I think somebody was doing that, that little seven, seven minute. They were off. Some people's eyes are closed. They sleep. But, but I, I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to bring it because y'all missed the nugget. Your faith has made you whole. I'm going to ask y'all one more time and I'm getting out of your way. What are you reaching? As you go into 2023, I want you to ask yourself this question over and over and over again. And for you, just came welcome again. Y'all gonna say this crazy pass out on this dude was talking this crazy, but I want y'all to hear me. And I put it to you like this. Everybody that was sick in the Bible that Jesus touched was healed. You read about that in so many accounts. Everybody that was sick in the Bible that Jesus touched was healed. But every person that Jesus, every person that touched Jesus was made whole. Man. Did y'all hear what I said? Every person that touched Jesus was not only healed, they were made whole. So when I ask you, what are you reaching for? Y'all better be reaching for the hem of his garment. For every circumstance that you're going through this year and next year, stop reaching out for his garment because once you reach for his garment, yeah. here's the thing. The people that Jesus touched were healed only if they had faith to believe. Yeah. But if you're reaching for the hymn of Jesus' garden, you already got faith. You already got the expectation. So would you touch it? Yeah. Here it is, and I'm done. When you reach for the hymn of his garden, not only are you made whole, but he fixes it all. He fixes your life. He fixes your alignment. He fixes your finances. He fixes your relationships. He fixes your credit. He fixes your status in your job. He fixes your reputation. He fixes your identity. He fixes your lifestyle. And he fixes your identity. Y'all better reach for God. I've been 60 years old this year. And it wasn't until I was 40, Brother Maurice, and you know, and I told y'all that I was called to pastor. And I was reaching for a lot of things, bro. I was reaching for a lot of things in the world. I've been married to this woman for 33 years, uh, 31 years, together 33, this year 32 and 34. And even in the first probably half, of my marriage, I, 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 I didn't understand it. I'm still reaching. I'm reaching on the things. Somebody said last night in the men's fellowship, we got some things that we gotta unlearn. I had a whole bunch of things that I needed to unlearn because my daddy taught me and my granddaddy taught me to conquer women. Have as many women as you want and don't be dedicated to women. So I'm trying to unlearn some things. I'm trying to do what they told me to do because this makes you a man. And by this time now I got four kids, I'm married for, for a number of years and I'm still doing stupid stuff. But it's not until I'm 35 years old that I go to a mountain in Colorado that God speaks to me and says, it's time out for nonsense, foolishness, and games. And I'm starting with you. I'm sick and tired of dealing with boys. I want my men back. And I'm starting with you because you're doing some bad stuff. And I've been blessing you. You want magazines all over this country. You are highly esteemed. People think you ain't even in ministry yet. But people know who you are. I'm going to tell you, and I've been telling y'all the whole time. God says, get your life straight. 
Start reaching for the hem of his garment because if you don't, guess what? If you don't submit, God will turn you over to your reprobate mind. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I know that. I've been there. Yeah. And the thing is, it, 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 and, I, and I tell y'all, y'all, y'all so, and we talked about it last night, some of us are so comfortable with sin. Yeah. Ah, well. <laughs> hey, yo. But I'm going to tell you about your little friend, the devil. Yeah. Yeah. Your little friend, the devil, you got a time bomb. Yeah. It's a ticking time bomb. And just like God at 35, I'm, I'm, I'm working for a big governmental agency. I'm doing a lot of things. I'm in magazines. I'm, I'm, known, I'm, known, I'm, I'm known, known all over the world. He said, I'll tell you what. You don't do what I do this time. And he told me. I'm a man of God. I'll tell you because they already know. If I catch you messing around again. If I catch you messing around again. He said, I will kill you. Not, 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 not that Adam and Eve kill, like separate from the Lord. No, I mean... So he need to tell me again. <laughs> I ain't need to go back and start messing with sin again. I, I start running from it. I was working in Philly. I jump in the elevator and then they hit the devil. As soon as I get the instruction, I get in the elevator, I'm going up to the and this girl jumping in, she said, mm. Yo. I will drink you. I said, God, this is the next floor. Get, get off this elevator. <laughs> You ain't have to tell me again. I ain't have to keep messing around with sin to know that I'm getting blown up. I'm telling y'all right now, feel the spirit of God. Somebody ain't here playing with sin. And you're playing with God's grace because you know how graceful he is. And you know how forgiving and loving he is. But guess what? Sometimes they take his hand off and he say, devil. Because you keep, and then you, then you get blown up. And then you see all these people on the news. Oh my gosh, he was, this is, he was such a godly person. <laughs> you only know what that freak John was doing behind closed doors. Yeah. Y'all better get it straight. So when I tell y'all, and I'm done, holiness is a discipline. Holiness is a lifestyle. And here's the thing, don't, I don't want y'all to think. Especially you, young man. My parents have brought me to church. This dude, this pastor, man, he's talking about being so holy, man. I, I'm not talking about being perfect. Because there was only one. Amen. But I'm talking about being effective. I'm not talking about taking advantage of grace. I'm talking about every single day. I told my son this last night. My mentor used to always tell me I didn't understand. He used to say two things. He'd say, how are you doing today? He would say, I'm doing better than I deserve. Mm. That made me go, ooh. Mm. And the second thing he would say is, I'm striving for borderline perfection. Mm. And that simply means that I can never be perfect. Yes. Right? But all I can do is strive to be like him. Yes. And here's what I want you, young man, because you I don't know why, but you're in my heart. I want you to understand. How old are you? 14. Oh my gosh. As you go on in life, and you continue to grow your relationship with God, just remember this whole thing called church is not about religion, it's about a relationship. And part of that relationship, what did, what did I show you all last night? Part of that relationship. It's a simple fact that you ain't always going to get everything right. Nope. You're going to disappoint your parents. You will. By some of the decisions that you're going to make. But they have to have enough grace to be able to pull you to the side and lovingly correct you. Gone are the days what the devil wants us to do. Smack you upside the head, kick you out the house. Stop kicking our kids out the house. Start kicking the devil out of the house. Amen. Last night... Last night, I, I, I showed the men. And I want you to get this. I don't know why. Last night, I had the men. I had a young man here, uh, 25 years old. His son was five. I said, do me a favor. Come here. And I know the young man. You know, he's an ex-football player. And I had him stand right here. And I said, get down. Give me five push-ups. Five. Football. Oh, 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 oh,
little five-year-old son. I said, Kim, come get on your daddy's back. I said, lay out on his back. I said, now give me five push-ups. I said, well, I went up a little bit. I said, 10. <laughs> and so I said, that's good. Where my man? Where Wiz? Then I had my man Wiz come up. Wiz right in the back. And I said, Wiz, come up here. And then his son, Marcus. I said, Marcus, come up here. I said, Wiz, get down here and give me one push up. And Wiz said, boom. So I said, Marcus, get on his back. Marcus said, huh? <laughs> Marcus said, what you mean? I said, Marcus, get on his back. He said, you mean like lay down on him? I said, yeah, lay down on him, Mark. Mark laid down on him. I said, now Wiz, give me one push up. Wiz. No, Wiz, no. He said, it ain't gonna happen. That's what he said. He, he didn't even try. He said, it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> then I told Marcus, I said, put your hands on the ground. Outside of your dad. And when I say go, both of y'all push together. And when they both push together, he gave me one push up. And a lesson for the young man is, you might get steaming mad at your dad, but you don't know the weight that he carries. You don't know the decisions that he makes that you have no idea about. About where you live, about what you do, about your safety. And for every young man in here who has ever cursed their dad, and I know I'm, I'm, I'm a little, who, you have no idea the battle we fight that you'll never see. But how much awesome is it when you work together? Right? When you work together, it was possible, right? Y'all probably get a big ten in them joints. You feel me? So I close today by saying this. What are you reaching for? And I want you to remember this day. And I want you, I'm going to give you something. Say, I went to this crazy church and this crazy pastor gave you. You won't remember me because you'll always want That's a word of encouragement. And the reason why I give you that word of encouragement, and Tasty is crazy, I was back in the office. You gave me a bag of coins. I don't know where I'm in. That one was on my desk. But when my daddy was alive, that's what he would used to do. He would just walk up to you, start ministering to you, and give you just a coin. People years later would come back and say, oh, Mr. Burton, I remember you gave me that coin. So we need to deposit some things in people's lives. You might not ever see me ever again, but you'd be like, you're that crazy church on um, Let's Start With Drive. Maybe I didn't go back and hear that do it again. But I'm going to tell you what, contact and impact. I'm going to tell you what, as we close out first Sunday of this last month of this year, we got some big expectations for next year. That's why I was pressing for everybody, not perfect will, but everybody to get back into the house of God. Get back to your first love because if you don't reach for his him, you won't ever understand the impact and the influence and the power and how much he has to change your life. I'm a witness, y'all. Y'all hear that all the time. People say I'm a witness. No, I'm a card carrying member. I will represent JC until I die because of the things that he has done for me over in my life. And here's another overinflated, uh, I'll say, I should have been dead. No, I really should have been dead. No, I really. No, really. Really. I should be here. But he thought it not robbery. Yeah. To reach down, Deacon Hurd's favorite phrase when I first met him, and grab me out of the muck and mire, mm -hmm. and clean me off, Amen. and say that you're worth it. Amen. So I tell you today, man of God, you mad. Amen. You hear me? You mad? Yes, you, yes. You mad. When everybody else has said to the contrary. Uh -huh. When everybody else who didn't understand you, when everybody else ignored you, yeah. I'm done. God said you matter. God said, did you watch any football games yesterday? Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen Ohio State Stadium? Mm -hmm. Ohio State Stadium has, holds about 100,000 people. God said you matter so much to me. 
<clears throat> that as you sit in a stadium, stadium of over 100,000 people, I will walk over every single person just to get to you. And once I touch you, the life will forever be changed. Somebody said, Mom, that pastor crazy. You were standing up on the chair. I bought him. So let us stand. I want to pray. Yeah, you can cut it off here.